The Saab 9000 is a bit like the eccentric who's been made to wear a suit. It is more conservatively styled. It's more conformist underneath too. Indeed, it shares its platform with a Fiat, Lancia and Alfa Romeo. The net result though is a great car. Whether it's a great Saab, well, we'll find out. Let's start with the design. It is really the picture of a 1980s executive saloon. There are some Saab details here though, chiefly the big headlights, solid bumpers, and at the rear, unusual for this class, glass hatchback with that ducktail spoiler here on the T16. It's missing, however, a wraparound windshield. It is actually shorter than the 900, although it is a lot wider and the wheelbase is longer too. And it's that last bit and the fact that it's got a transversely mounted engine now that speaks volumes about the volume of its interior. Let's go and see that now. And this is one of the 9000's strongest features. The interior is spacious and comfortable. It's also a step on in design from the 900. The new dashboard is ergonomic. They've got this um, L-shaped design here. It does work well. The seats too are more comfortable, better, more supportive. And even the rear ones, as well as there being quite a lot of legroom, they have their individual contours too, which is a nice little touch. An extra touch for this particular car is the burr walnut door cappings, as well as on the dash. And well, it's a luxurious place to be. The quality is also a little bit stepped up. Everything just feels a little bit more solid actually than some of the older Saabs. And generally it feels like a, a posh car. One little thing to note though, is that the ignition key is no longer down here, it's on the dash. Well, little Saab quirks aside, let's start it up and go for a drive. And on the move, it is undoubtedly a Saab. We've got the same familiar hefty controls with patience to them and the same kind of sound too. Slightly different though, tempered, because of course it is transversely mounted now. And with this car's aftermarket, aftermarket exhaust is a little bit more uh, accentuated, let's say, boomy. Sounds good though. It is indeed the same kind of powertrain that you would find in the 900 Turbo. So that means 173 brake horsepower at 5300 RPM and 201 foot-pounds of torque at 3000 RPM. ABC as well going on, so there's a high compression ratio and decent response um, at least above three. Yes, there is turbo lag. Gets a move on after three. That's where it does its best. Brakes are good too. Again, it's very similar to the 900, 280 mil fronts and 270 rears. <laughs> it runs a little bit out of puff above 5,500 RPM, but it really, between four and 5,000, it really gets a move on. Nice and smooth engine too, brakes, the pedal feel is good, nice and positive. Right, let's talk about the chassis here because we just scrubbed a little bit on the front axle there. <laughs> What's new is that we've got McPherson struts at the front now, but curiously they went with the dead axle uh, panard rod and Watts linkage just as in 900 at the rear. Anti-roll bars front and rear again but a refinement for the 9000 and you can feel it sometimes when you load up the car mid-corner is this new rear suspension geometry that's meant to neutralize the car and introduce a bit of oversteer and you can kind of feel some mostly third gear corners actually when you're trail braking you can feel the car start to pivot and maybe even lift a rear wheel <laughs> Right, yeah, 40 to, to 90, that kind of region, this car really does get a move on. Not 60 time of seven and a half seconds, doesn't really 
explain fully the level of performance this car has. Just run through, to illustrate better, the 50 to 70 times. In fifth gear, it's about five and a bit seconds. Fourth gear, four seconds. Third gear, three seconds. That's this car's real performance edge. It's in, the, in those middle speeds, using its turbochargers, they're the best. The steering sometimes, moving back into the handling, can feel a little bit over-geared. It's 3.3 turns lock to lock, power assist of course, and it doesn't quite have as much feel as I'd like, and as I say, it's a little bit laboured with the, with the amount of travel you have to go through to get the front end to bite. Bite it does, though, and it's positive. There's a lot of, there's quite a bit of roll that's introduced, but then, as I say, you again get the chassis to work through its geometry. The suspension itself is nice and supple. There's a firm edge to it, but no, there's, um, there's a lot of control here actually, and the structure is quite impressive too. Right now we're back into our third gear corners around here. Some elevation changes, starting to get the chassis to move around a bit. Yeah, it's got. It feels typically Saab in that it's uh, it's controlled, but a bit playful. I feel a little bit harsh keeping the engine above four and a half thousand. It's not as it's not the smoothest engine in the world, but it'll take it. of ABS cutting in there that does tell me that it does indeed have ABS. Yeah, a lot of roll there in second gear. Heel and towing is decent. A lot of grip actually. 205 section uh, front tyres. It does mean that it can cover ground quite quickly if a little bit uh, roly-poly via passengers. Seats actually, proving to be very supportive. And then if you uh, tone it down a little bit on some more bumpy roads here, horrible little bit of tarmac there. Rides very well actually. And that's where the, you know, the quality of the interior, there's a lot fewer um, fidgets happening around here and the whole thing feels nicely damped. Right, so we're just going into a town here. Let's uh, see what the low speed ride is like. I would say it's quite good, actually. You do tend to feel most of uh, the road, but it's kind of separated um, through a bit of suppleness. The boomy exhaust, as I say, with the aftermarket exhaust in this car does kind of reverberate a little bit, but to be fair, that's probably what you want. The car feels maneuverable. Um, it's not too big, and yet the cabin is big. Another little neat thing about this car's interior that you notice on the go is the fabulous ventilation system. It's uh, particularly good because you can directly air almost infinitely um, on these really neat uh, vents here. Nice little dials too that to turn them off and on. Again, that would be, become a Saab trademark and here it is first, it's nice to see. The other thing you come to notice in uh, town and well, mixed driving in general, is that the car is quite high geared and whether you're wanting to push the maximum amount out of the car in terms of performance or keep it in a usable power band through town, it does mean that you have to work the gearbox quite a lot. Generally, 30 miles an hour is like third of maybe fourth gear. And if you ask for performance below 3,000, well, you're gonna wait and then it comes. 
But again, that's all part of that Saab character, isn't it? And it also means that at 70 miles an hour, we're doing like 2700 RPM, which in my book is pretty good. Economy, well, I'm not sure if it's quite up there, but uh, you should be able to eke out 30. If you really push on, well, it'll still drink, won't it? And uh, let's not talk about that too much. But overall, there is a huge amount of Saab character here. It may well be in a retailered suit with a little bit of a towel design in there as well, actually. But it's unmistakably Saab. And I think actually the more years that go on, it starts to have its own distinct character within the 80s executive class. Add to that then, you have all of the refinement and comfort and a bit of luxury actually, and innovation in the interior, nice detail touches, the little lights on the seat belt buckles as well. It's little things like that that are both really pleasing from a luxury car standpoint and just say Saab in big bold letters. And then the fact that actually it's got a lot of behavior of a hot hatch actually, strong front axle, a rear end that wants to play and yet it blends with the Saab characteristics of safety so it doesn't um, want to kill you and there's a maturity to the controls. Yeah. There you go, it's hit a lot of those uh, points, hasn't it? Is it a great Saab? Yeah, I would say so. After all, it says T16 on the back, doesn't it? So it can go too far wrong. <laughs> Got one a van coming up. Let's prep the turbo and go. There we go. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that video. If you want to see more Saab stuff, well, subscribe, watch some of our other content, and till the next one, thanks a lot to Two Strokes Turbo for lending this car, and uh, yeah, we'll see you soon.